What a joy to be a part of this ARC Canada Digital Conference. Uh, we love ARC churches and ARC ministries throughout our nation, the U.S. and the world. Greetings and much love and appreciation to uh, Brent and Jonathan and the, the whole leadership team, uh, men of God that we uh, esteem highly. A word of intro for so many of you that don't know us. Uh, we pastor on the south shore of Montreal in the province of Quebec. We pioneered uh, the church 27 years, planted and pioneered the church with a handful of people. We always show this picture uh, from uh, the beginning uh, of our history. Uh, very humble uh, beginnings 27 years ago in the province of Quebec. One of the, mo the most... Uh, um, under-evangelized area of the world, really, and of North America, certainly. But by the grace of God, we are standing today with over 5,000 people uh, in our weekend services, six weekend services, four campuses. We have um, uh, founded and developed a mercy a ministry, a mercy agency called Action New Life. The church is called New Life, Nouvelle Vie, Action New Life, who now serves through a food bank and many other programs, over 15,000 people a month. By the grace of God, we were able to, uh, I'm the president of a Bible school, fully accredited Bible school, the French World Theological Institute uh, that offers now certificate and, and ministry and also a bachelor's degree, master's program accredited with Laval University. We have over a thousand graduates in uh, throughout Quebec, but also uh, through many French countries uh, around the world. And I'm also uh, the president of a uh, a network of churches, uh, the uh, ACF, the Association of, uh, of uh, French Churches, uh, with 150 churches, ministries, credential holders in Quebec and in the nations. Your, our theme for this digi digital conference is Better Together, and I would like to propose to you Better Together, even in the valley of death. In this COVID-19 year that we will never forget, Psalm 23 speaks to me. Uh, Psalm 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow through. I walk through. We're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Most of us, for the most of us, it is the first time in our ministries, in our lifetimes, that we, uh, we get up every day and see a death toll over our, how many people died, over our city. The psalmist says, death surrounded me. Uh, a death toll of our city, our nation, our provinces, our nation, death toll uh, in, in the world. I've been in over 55 countries, and, and through history, uh, we, I've met pastors that in the last 50 years or more have a and, and, and whole movement of churches that have been through uh, uh, things that we, 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 don't know, we know nothing of here in Canada. If you, if I, when I'm uh, in post-genocidal countries or in countries under, uh, under Al-Qaeda or uh, I was in many, many, many times in countries that were uh, ministering under the communist regime, they went through things that we know nothing of here in Canada. For us, it's the first time something of that magnitude. It's, the, it's a, a death of many things. It's the shadow of death on many levels. On the economy in our churches, we have men, uh, businessmen and the economy facing the shadow of death. Multifaceted death. Death of a, a church, at least temporary, but the shadow of death of church as we knew it. Ha, as we knew how to do church, of, of church planting, of gathering, ministering, church planting. For us here in Montreal, on March 8th, we inaugurated and we launched a brand new site uh, with a brand new church plant with 250 people, a great core group, and, and we announced and introduced officially who their pastor were. They were also were all so excited. We're looking for buildings uh, to buy or to rent in the city. We have a good core group. We've been working on this for a year and a half, and we end up, uh, this is March 8th, and it was the last time we were able to, uh, to meet. Uh, they have not been able to meet in person since. So everything, is, everything has changed. It's the shadow of death. I don't know uh, how your beginning of the year was, but for us, after all these years, uh, I, would, I was saying in January and February that this was probably our best start 
of the year. There was a lot of things that, uh, in terms of, of structure and motivation and mentoring and everybody in their place in ministry, staff development, vision casting, strategic planning, identifying and implementing uh, our growth uh, engines and goals and faith uh, goals and targets for 220. Everything was set and then March hits and uh, it's a worldwide pandemic and nothing is the same. Uh, I teach on, I've been teaching on leadership for years and specifically on leadership in crisis. But this crisis is unprecedented in so many ways. It's, we've never been through this before. We don't have something to refer to. It's multifaceted. It's not only a, a, a pandemic health-wise. It's a pandemic, of course, health-wise. But it's also a pandemic uh, of, of emotions, a pandemic of fear, a pandemic of anxiety, and, and in many cases, depression. It's also now, uh, if you add the George Floyd uh, incident and death, and, and everything that has followed uh, with, all, with rioting and many, many, uh, all of our cities are shaking by this. It's very heavy here in Montreal right now. It's, there's also a third pandemic that joins in. It's a pandemic of rage. It's a pandemic of anger. It's a pandemic of fists shaking against all types of discrimination. Why, how, how are we to speak through this? So it's multifaceted. It's evolving constantly. It's a, we, we've, we've dealt with crisis where this is a crisis, we, we, but, but now this one is always evolving. It's a, it's a crisis without a, uh, an expert. We don't have someone to, the government themselves are making this up, are, are finding their way, are, are finding their way through it. It's, an, it's a pandemic with, without a time frame. I've been through so many crises in all these years of ministry, and we're in it, but we, we see, we begin to see an end. We don't know, we, have, we don't have a time frame from when this will end. Will there be a second wave? How long will this be? It is a crisis with so much, and that's hard for leaders, so much of the decisional power is out of our hands. We're not deciding. We're at the mercy of others. And, and one of the most often counsel that Scripture gives leaders, uh, God speaking to leaders in crisis, is one of the most uh, heard count and read counsel is God saying, and, and it's the Spirit of God saying in Scriptures to leaders in crisis, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't be forgetful. So, so I want to give you very quickly, this is just sharing my heart, three scriptures that have ministered to me in these last few months as we hoping to be better together through this crisis. Uh, three anchors to hold on to. Uh, uh, three dynamics to practice. Three spiritual leadership realities uh, to uh, uh, implement, but also to communicate to your teams. Three, don't forget. And the first one is, don't forget to stay strong, to stand strong, for he makes a way where there was no way. Don't forget to stay strong, to stand strong, for God makes a way when there is no way. In Psalm 23, he leads me beside still waters. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. There's a leading of God. Stay strong because God always makes a way where there is no way. I can stand strong and fear no evil, says the psalm, because you are with me. This is what I walk in every day. I can stand strong because your staff and your rod, they comfort me. Years ago, I spent a morning in Israel with a shepherd who taught us for three hours on Psalm 23 and explaining to us the rod and the staff as uh, used uh, as symbols of direction, protection, and rescue. I'm comforted by my God. Uh, I can stay strong. He makes a way where there's no way. There's direction. There's comfort. There, there is this, uh, this, this sense that I have to keep in my heart and cultivate in my heart that, that I can stay strong because his name is upon me. For his name's sake, I, I'm comforted. I walk in your name. Please remember that through this that the sovereign God who's Alpha and Omega, his name is on you. This is for his name. It's his church. His name is on his church. His name is on his timetable. His name is upon your ministry, upon your family. His name is on us, his leaders. You're his leaders. We carry his name. He will take care of his name. He'll provide for his name. He will lead us because his name is on us. Please don't forget to stand strong. He makes a way where there is no way. Here's a verse that has ministered to me in the last few months. Psalm 77, 19 and 20. For your ways and your paths were through great waters, and your footsteps were not known, O God. 
Your purposes led them through a pathway no one knew was there and that was never seen before. I'm going to read it, read it again. This is so powerful. For your ways and your paths were through great waters. This is what we're going through. And your footsteps were not known. Your purposes led them through a pathway no one knew was there and that was never seen before. This passage speaks of uh, the passage uh, uh, about Moses leading a people um, out of slavery, out uh, into uh, the, the promised land. This is a picture of leadership, leading one million Jews heading to go across the Sinai uh, Peninsula, uh, mountains on each side, a murderous throng, an army behind them, and the Red Sea in front of them. They come to a place, and there's no way out. You can't back away. And there's no way out, and you can't move forward. They are immobilized and isolated. And Scripture tells us that that place was called Baal Zephon. And Baal Zephon literally means it's the place of hidden treasure. And when you, we are at that place where, where we're immobilized, where we, we, we're isolated, we, we can't go back, there's no way to move forward, we can't escape, but please let it, let it uh, uh, be imprinted in your spirit again. Your ways, your path, oh God, through great waters, your footsteps were not known. You make a way when there was no way. Your purposes lead, led them through a pathway. The, the crisis can become, will become, a catalyst, a catalyst for the new things God has prepared for us. It is, the, this pandemic can become a pathway. Now, the, he led them through a path that was never seen before, that no one had seen before. And God is leading his church in this moment in history, leading us here in this nation of Canada in a, a, through a pathway we had never seen before, through a, how to do church, serve our people, make disciples, win souls, develop the kingdom in a fresh pathway. In 55, uh, na 36 years of ministry in 55 nations, all throughout all these years of ministry, God always takes us to a place, a crossroads place where, where I have to stay strong and be reminded He makes a way where there is no way. He makes a way where there will be no way. I'm looking, I'm thinking of this pandemic now. In three, the last three months, we totally here in Montreal had to reinvent ourselves. We now have a programming, a daily programming throughout the week on uh, all online, on the web. Uh, in an amazing way to us, when in the first weeks, are we even going to survive this? But by the grace of God, after three months, we, we have seen a number of views uh, watching and, and participating on our live uh, broadcast and everything that we, we put for services and uh, uh, the whole programming uh, multiply four or five times more than we ever did. We are reaching more people by, by far than we ever did. More new people, more backsliders coming back, more people that were sporadic that are now through uh, morning devotionals and, and all the programming and the Sunday services and midweek services and prayer meetings online. We have more people in, in groups and Zoom grooms that we ever had. The food bank uh, of uh, the Our Mercy uh, Agency is now serving 15,000 people. We were at 10,000 people the last a few years. Doors are opening that no man can shut. So in this season, don't forget in the valley of death to stay strong. He makes a way. He will lead you through a path you've never seen before. And don't forget to see and to seize the moment. Here's a second thought. Don't forget to see and seize the moment. He's the God of the valleys, not only of the peaks. Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There's many valleys in Scripture. Just a few. The valley of Sedim in Genesis 14 is a valley of failure. And we felt that, all of us, a different season in our life. And maybe you're in that valley now. The valley of Israel at Numbers 13, the valley of fear. The Valley of Elah, uh, 1 Samuel 17. The Valley of the Giants. The Valley of Conflict and Battle. And then there's the Valley of Baca. The Valley of Tears. Psalm 84, the Valley of Tears. The Valley of Grief. I'm thinking through this COVID of this one church, our friends. I, well, I have a friend in France, in, in, his, in his one church, in his church that he, he's been pastoring for years. Over 40 people died of the COVID-19. He was uh, in intensive care himself, just survived. And all these funerals and the pressure that is upon the Valley of Tears. Through the valley, here's a passage that God has been using to strengthen 
me and our leaders here in Montreal through this valley may better together. Deuteronomy 11, 11 and 12. Uh, reminding us that valleys are an intricate and inevitable part of our journey through the promised land. You can't escape them. Peter said, don't be surprised when you go through them. Deuteronomy 11, 11 and 12. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys. Not only hills, not only peaks, but valleys. Which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. He cares. These eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord your God are always on and never leave you or forsake you from the beginning to the very end of the year. From the beginning to the very end of this year, 2020, we will go through this valley. The God never promised, never promised us a, a, uh, uh, to prevent valleys in our lives. He promises to uh, His presence, His purposes, and His promises to possess, to possess the land that He calls us to. He never promised us the absence of valley, but He, but he, he promises His attention. His eyes are always beyond us. To activate. He promises to activate His authority for His purposes through the valley. He never, He very r- rarely gives us a timetable through our valleys. But He wants us, He wants the valleys, the trial, to become a testimony uh, in the valley. I'm giving you this, uh, just throwing this at you. I have a time, time frame here I have to respect. But I'm, I'm throwing this your way. In Deuteronomy 11, He says, this is part of, what, of the promised land. There'll be peaks and valleys, but my eyes will always be on you. And heaven will be open uh, to you, but please keep Keep, keep your passion. And same passage in Deuteronomy 13, uh, De- Deuteronomy 11, 13. Keep your passion. My commandment to you today is to love and to serve in the valley with all your heart and all your mind. Keep your passion in the valley. I'm changing. I'm all, I've, I've altered my personal devotional life like never before. Through this valley, I've cut out almost most, uh, almost all TV times and, net, and Netflix time. And, no, this is, this is a time to be, to be at the source. This is a time to be renewed in my spirit. This is a time to keep my passion. It's a time to keep uh, protecting your purity. He says, in the valley, take heed to yourselves. Deuteronomy the, uh, 10, the, take he, 11, uh, forgive me. Take heed to yourself, lest your heart be deceived. There's particular temptations in the valleys of our lives. So we are to keep our passion, to keep our purity, keep processing for His new purposes. See and seize the moment. Let His Word be constantly before your eyes, He says in verse 18. And it's a season to keep perpetuating, to prepare. Teach this to your children. Teach this. This is a season to teach your leaders and to teach second generation and third generation and to teach a crisis leadership. Don't forget to stand strong. He makes a way where there is no way because he's the God. He, he's the God not only of the valleys, but he's the God. He's the God not only of the, of the peaks, but of the valley. In 1 Kings 20, 22-23, we see God's people being attacked by 32 kings. It's like a perfect storm. You feel, we feel like that in this. That's the way we feel through this uh, pandemic. It's coming on all, all direction. And in the peaks, in the mountains, they fight. And God gives them an amazing victory. And you can read it in verse 22 and 23 of 1 Kings 20, that the man of God warns him, now that this has happened, you have a great victory in the peaks, but it will come again. The enemies will gather and come again. And this is what the enemy said in 1 Kings 20, 22, and 23. Their God, after their, their terrible defeat, their God is the God of the peaks. Therefore, they were stronger than us. But if we attack them in the valley, we will be stronger than they. There are specific attacks in, in the valley. As we go through this, these pandemics, uh, they, they fe- we feel sometimes so overwhelmed. Verse 27 of that passage says that the children of Israel were, were in camp against their enemy. They were immobilized. They were isolated. The enemy against them. And they, they felt like literally, uh, literally like little flocks of goats while the Syrians filled the country. A sense of being so overwhelmed. But God answers with a see, see and, and seek the, uh, seize the moment. This is a moment because God is not only the God of the peaks. 
He's the God of, of the valley. And look, this is, how, this is the response. Then a man of God came and spoke to the king of Israel and said, Thus says the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he's not the God of the valleys. Therefore, I will deliver all this great multitude in your hand. And you shall know that I am the Lord of the peaks, and I am the Lord of the valleys. This word is for you today. He's not only there in the peaks, he is there with you in the valley. The prosperity gospel is a gospel of peaks only. Now, I've, we've all preached messages on from multiplication into, uh, uh, from, from storm into multiplication. But actually, the disciples went through a season of peaks of multiplication into a storm. But on the other side of the, that, that's the cycle of ministry. And on the other side of the storm, there was a deeper revelation and a deeper uh, fulfillment of God's purpose and revelation of Christ. God, God reserves His greatest teaching, His greatest revelation, His greatest preparation for His kingdom purposes in us in the valley. He is the God in the valley. From victory to vision to valleys to deeper vict greater victories, deeper vision to valleys. This is God's processes. In, in the valleys, we get real. We reevaluate, we assess. I love this quote by Warren Buffett. He says, It is only when the tide goes out that you see who is swimming naked. Right now, the tide is out, and we see our churches for what they are. How, how are we really making disciples? How strong are we really? How committed are our people to the vision of the church and to the kingdom of God? Really. In the valleys, we get real, we reevaluate. Re we refocus on the essentials. How are we going to do true church and true worship and true discipleship and soul winning? Uh, we, in the valleys, we release extra baggage. We repent. We rebuild altars. I want to promise you that in the valleys, you will reap. You will reap in a greater measure than you can imagine. And in the valley, we reach up, reach in, and reach down for fresh revelation. This is the last thought. Don't forget to stand strong. He makes a way when there is no way. Don't forget to see and seize the moment. He's the God of the valley with you now in this COVID-19. Not only of the peaks. And don't forget to speak to your soul and not listen to it. The psalmist in Psalm 23 says, He restores my soul. He restores my soul. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. I want to close with Psalm 42 uh, today. I want, to sh I want to close and pray with you. I'm uh, looking at Psalm 42. And the last, this is the last thought. So important. During this crisis, do not, uh, do not uh, listen to your soul. Speak to your soul. Now, when uh, when I, again, in our little session with the shepherd and his sheep in Israel, he actually showed us this. He explained to us the whole, that whole passage of anointing the, the head and, and how bugs and parasites would be infecting the ears and the eyes of the sheep. Uh, and you see, he said, I, I, saw, I, I see, saw some of my sheep being so tormented that they would actually run their heads into a, a wall just to try to stop the torment. And I felt like that some mornings through this COVID season. But the, the shepherd uh, soothes, the shepherd anoints with oil. And when, when there's that cleansing, that cleaning, that cleansing, then the calm comes uh, to, the, to the sheep. Now, now in Psalm, in Psalm 42, um, that David is isolated. He is in confinement, and he's deeply sorrowful and missing the old normal. In Psalm 42, he says, I remember these days, these glorious days, when I used to go with the multitudes to the house of God. I went with them with, to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitudes that kept a pilgrim feast. Uh, he remembered days and we remember days. This is how it was where I handled things and I knew how to run church and I knew how to do services and I knew how to. But now his soul is described with these terms. My soul is now thirsty. It's cast down. It's mourning. It's tormented. Mo it's being mocked. Over and over you, you, you read in Psalm 42, they, they say unto him day and night, where is your God? And there's a human level, but there's a, there is a spirit level. Where the enemy of our soul is saying, where is God through all this? Have you been abandoned? Are we gonna, how, how are you going to even go on in ministry? And David refuses to listen to his soul. He actually speaks to his soul. He restores my soul in the valley of death. Psalm 42 verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? He's speaking to his soul. Why are you disquieted within me? 
Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him again. I shall yet praise Him again. Don't forget to speak to your soul and not listen to it. You know Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, speaking to his soul, and forget none of his benefits. If you listen to your soul, and if you don't speak to your soul and take authority over your soul, if you let your soul speak to you, you will forget God's blessing, God's faithfulness, God's presence, God's purposes, God's past faithfulness to you. If you, if you listen to your soul, you will forget, you will be feeble in your faith, you'll be filled with fear, you'll faint, you'll fall, you'll fail. Your soul is what you are thinking, it is your emotions, what you are feeling, and it is your will, your decisions, what you are choosing. What I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I'm choosing has to be submitted to, to the Spirit of God and say, oh God, I'm going to speak to my soul. When my soul speaks, murmurs, and torments me with fear, I will speak of His faithfulness. When my soul murmurs doubt and despair, I will speak of my destiny in Him. When, when my soul uh, torments, attacks me, and bring, pulls me back towards my past, oh, I will speak. I will speak to my soul about His presence and His promise. When it, my soul speaks of failure, I will speak to my soul. La, last verse uh, today, and then we pray together in Psalm 42. This is, a, this is a level of leadership in communion of the leader himself. Deep calls unto deep. At the noise, this is when you speak to your soul. Deep calls unto deep as the noise of the waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night and in the, in the valleys, not only in the hills. His song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Deep calls unto deep today. I'm privileged to spend these moments with you and to pray with you today asking you and, and challenging you to allow his waves of his presence and of his promises and of his spirit to wash over your soul for his oil of his presence and his holy spirit to calm your mind and your spirit my what i'm thinking what i'm feeling what i'm choosing oh god we we will remember 2020 as the year of these questions did you protect yourself against the virus are you infected are you, do you have symptoms? Are, you, are you symptomatic or asymptomatic? But I want to ask you to, I want to ask you, us as we seek and, and we endeavor to be better together. I want to ask, ask God to, to fill us again with a sense, would you hear his voice that says to you and to me, don't forget to stand strong. He makes a way when there is no way. Don't forget to see and seize the moment. He's the God of the valleys with you, with us, not only of the peaks. And don't forget to speak to your soul and not listen to it. So, Lord, we offer ourselves to you. I pray for my brothers, my sisters, for leaders, and we surrender to you today. We will not forget who you are. You make a way when there is no way. We will not forget that you, will make, you are making us go through a valley, but on the other side of this valley is vision and victory and purpose. I pray strength, I pray courage, I pray encouragement. I pray that we will be, will, will be alert to speak, even to silence our soul and speak to our soul, to allow the deep of your heart to be communicated to us, deep calling unto deep, and the billows of your, and the waves of your presence to come and wash over us. My soul, my soul, Bless the Lord and forget none of his benefits. And God, we, we are committing to you today to serve your purposes through this, through our churches and ministries across Canada. In Jesus' name, make us better together. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you.